Hey guys, I'm Ty with Muscle Wiki. This is our lovely model, Cheska. Uh, we're gonna be taking you through both the high bar and the low bar squat today. So I always like to start with the upper body because the upper body is so important on a squat and it's oftentimes overlooked. So we wanna start with the hands and we're gonna go from hands to shoulders and work our way down as we go. So yeah, I'm gonna have you go ahead and take your grip. Now you've got two options as far as grip, thumbed or thumbless. This largely depends on the person. If you have more mobility at your wrist, if you have healthy wrists, then go ahead and go thumb just so you have the bar a little more secure. But if you get any wrist pain from performing this way, yeah, go thumbless. That'll give you a little more room in your wrist joint and should be a lot more comfortable. Just make sure the bar is set very deeply in your hand when you go thumbless, okay? The next thing, we're gonna sink underneath the bar and Cheska's gonna use a low bar position and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about low bar versus high bar and also how you decide which one you should use. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna go low bar because that's what Cheska's most comfortable with. And then we're gonna go to the walkout. Now, first thing you wanna do is roll your elbows underneath the bar, get all the way underneath the bar and then you wanna squat the weight straight up. Many times you'll see people kind of good morning the weight out of the rack. You don't want to do that and put all that tension on your lower back. Okay, so squat the weight up first, and then you're going to initiate your walkout. I'm going to go ahead and come on back. You want to try to make your walkout as efficient as possible. So the fewer steps you can take on your walkout, the better. The longer you take, the more energy you lose, the more tired you'll get, and the more energy you'll lose from your upper body. So now we're here, we're ready to squat, almost, almost ready to squat. So consider this, you have all this room in between the weight, the resistance, the bar, and the active joints, which are your hips and your knees. You got all this space in here. So your legs, of course, can move quite a bit of weight. So why is it that you can leg press a ton and can't squat as much? Well, it's because your upper body maybe can't handle all that weight. So how do we get your upper body stronger and uh, generate more tension at your upper body so you can transfer all that strength from your legs to up here at the bar? Well, breathing. Breathing is the most important thing here. And try to think of your upper body as like a, uh, uh, a can, a soda can. If you have an empty soda can, you can crush it, no problem, right? If you have a full soda can, you can. You can stomp on it, you can put all your strength into it all you want, and it's not gonna budge. So we wanna try to get this upper body as filled with air as possible. So the way you do that is you wanna inhale and then press your abdomen outward. Now one good way to practice this is with a belt. So if you have a belt, practice your breathing, leave a little bit of space in between your abdomen and the bar, and then try to fill up the rest of that space with air. So breathe in and then press outward against my hands. Yeah, perfect, exactly. So now that we've done that, now we're ready to squat. We're gonna do a big inhale, big breath in, press out against that breath, yep. And then we're gonna initiate the squat by shooting your hips back, hitting parallel depth, and then coming back up, and then big exhale at the top, yep. Let's go again, nice and slow. Let's take our time. And as you can see, shooting the hips back nice and far, keeping a flat back. And you don't wanna go so low that your butt starts to tuck underneath. You wanna avoid that, that's a hyperextended spine. Let's go ahead and get another rep. Brace, perfect. So there, and then back up. Yep, okay, now let's pause there. Now, I also wanna take you through how to put the bar back. This is a thing I often see people I don't want to say mess up, but mess up. So you want to take the bar all the way to this flat piece here on your barbell rack. That's what it's there for. And then sink down into the cups or the hooks. You don't want to stop and then lean forward. That's going to put a lot of tension on your lower back and God forbid you miss. And then you've got a serious problem on your hands. You don't want that. So all the way forward until you smack against that flat part. And then we sink down and then you're all done. How do you decide low bar versus high bar? Uh, interestingly enough, these two things have been compared and I'm going to link an article in the description to a Stronger by Science article that compares the muscle activity of both quads and the glutes on high bar and low bar squats. They found that there really is no difference between the two. 
as far as muscle activity. So then what should you base it on? What should you base whether you do high bar or low bar squat? I would tell you based it on what allows you to move the most weight, because that's what you want. So if you have a shorter torso and a longer femur length, you're gonna have a more hip dominant squat, uh, like our lovely model Cheska here. I'm gonna have her perform uh, just a body weight squat and pause at the bottom for me. You see how her knees don't really travel too far forward and her hips shoot a lot further back. So for someone like her, I would suggest a low bar squat. Uh, if you're a type of person who has a longer torso and shorter femurs and you squat a lot more upright, see I have to bring my heels off the floor in order to even mimic that movement, then you should squat high bar. It's just more natural a position for each kind of person. And I wanted to give you a couple extra things to watch out for. Number one is knee valgus, which is the knees collapsing in. My knees hurt just looking at this. Make sure you avoid knees collapsing in at all costs. It's a dangerous position for your knee joint. And here on the left side of your screen, you can see me spreading the floor apart. So almost imagine you're trying to push your feet outside of the side of your shoes or you're trying to split the floor in half. That'll help keep your knees over your toes, especially if you're a wide stance squatter. And speaking of stance, I uh, wanted to show you what is not okay as far as how far out your toes go. We don't wanna go that far out, but toes forward or slightly ankled out is totally fine. And last thing, broken wrists. Make sure you keep your wrists strong, like you see in this position here. So you don't put too much stress on that wrist joint. If you get a lot of stress on the wrist joint, that pain is gonna limit the amount of weight that you can lift. And we wanna be able to lift the maximum amount of weight possible. That's it for today. Thank you guys for listening and watching. Please subscribe, like, comment, let us know what you want to hear from us next. And we'll see you next time.